with a hot dry desert for the west. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. Ooh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. The scraggly bushes of the dry brushland taper off to a hot sandy desert as far as the eye can see to the west. To the east, Graham can see the sparse edge of Serenia's woods. Beyond the large boulders, Graham can see the dry brushland extending to the north for many miles. A rocky cliff ending in a string of huge boulders blocks further travel to the north. Rocky cliffs rise high above Graham's head. Looking to the south, the desert seems to extend forever. Sheer rock cliffs rising straight up from the desert floor form an unreachable flat plateau at the top. The two large rocks at the cliff base attract Graham's attention. A small pool of water has formed in the space between the two rocks. The facade of a magnificent temple has been carved into the rocky cliffs by an unknown ancient civilization. From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Open Sesame! Graham contemplates an attempt to climb the rocky cliff, but wisely chooses not to. Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. The scorching sun burns down on the dry desert as Graham struggles through the hot sand. He looks around, but all he can see is more desert. Uh-oh. A picked clean and sun-bleached skeleton lies in the sand of the hot, dry desert. What happened? Who can say? But it makes Graham uneasy nevertheless. Graham can't do much to help the poor man now, and vice versa. Well, it's too late for conversation now. An old shoe lies forgotten near the poor skeleton. Uneasily, Graham reaches down and removes the old shoe from the desert sand. The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon. A small oasis. It's tantalizing water, so sparkling in the desert sun. Graham's hot, thirsty body is irresistibly drawn to it. Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. A small well. 
Graham's hot, thirsty body is irresistibly drawn to it. A rope and water basket sit near a small well. Ah, life-giving water. Overhearing loud music and drunken laughter from within the larger tent, Graham guesses the bandits must be celebrating their latest plunder. There doesn't seem to be any activity within the smaller tent. With disgust, Graham looks at a drunken bandit lying face down in the desert sand, completely passed out. A beautiful harem girl belly dances for the merrymaking bandits within the larger tent. A lone camel waits near the large tent while its owner celebrates inside. The campfire, all but forgotten, has been reduced to a pile of glowing embers. A large clay jar full of water stands by the campfire. Phew! Holding his nose against the drunken bandit's pungent odor, Graham quickly searches him but doesn't find anything of importance. The bandits would notice if the camel was disturbed. The glowing coals of the dying campfire hold no interest to Graham. Ah, life-giving water. Disturbing the horses would be very unwise at this time. Assorted odds and ends clutter the inside of this small tent, while upon a lovely carpet sleeps another of the despicable renegades. A jeweled staff leaning against the back of the tent catches Graham's interest. Snoring loudly upon a beautiful carpet lies a sleeping bandit. Taking care to be very quiet, Graham reaches out and takes the staff into his possession. The jeweled staff is obviously the work of an expert craftsman. The worn old shoe is cracked and dry from the desert sun. Wearing one old shoe would do Graham no good at all. life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Carved into the rocky cliffs, an ancient temple towers above Graham as he surveys its ornate columns and friezes. Stone statues of Pegasus seem to guard the old crumbling temple. Looming majestically before him, the massive temple door beckons tantalizingly to Graham. Graham examines the statue carefully, but doesn't see anything of importance. Open Sesame! The temple door won't open. Perhaps there's something missing. Open Sesame! Open Sesame! Oh, 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 oh. 
Don't waste time. The door may close any time now. Treasure? Treasure piled everywhere. The sparkling brilliance of it overwhelms Graham as he peers around the temple's dim interior. Near the temple door sits an old, tarnished brass bottle. A single gold coin, separated from the rest of the treasure, lies on the floor near the door. Quickly, Graham grabs the old brass bottle. Bending down, Graham hurriedly picks up the gold coin from the temple floor. Whew. That was close! The staff lies in several broken pieces on the temple steps. The staff is broken and is of no use anymore. Well, there you are. I was just starting to get concerned. Don't worry about me, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing. 